the channel Physics by IDNs. Today, we are honored and delighted to have a special guest in our channel, Mr. Shuryan Sasthana. So, let me introduce about himself. So, Ms. we heartily welcome Mr. Shuryan Sasthana. He is currently pursuing his doctoral research on the topic Interrelation of Non Classicality Features and Application to Quantum Communication. And he did his basic uh, BSc in physics uh, honors from Kanpur University. And he was a gold medalist in MSc uh, in physics from IIT Delhi. During his PhD, he has published 10 highly reputed journals and five international conference papers. He also wrote single author paper during his PhD independently in the field of quantum communication. So welcome, sir. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, Sati, for having me here. And uh, I really appreciate some people here in my hometown. They watch your channel and they are they find it extremely helpful. So I really appreciate your effort that you are reaching out to people who do not have that much access to our uh, highly uh, those Institute of Eminences like IIT Delhi. So thank you, Sati, for having me here. Yes, sir. So well, let me let us discuss the, some uh, common questions that students usually ask me that uh, what is the area of research in quantum communication? So in quantum communication, basically, so for, uh, there are two ways to look at it. So first you look at it from the viewpoint of India and then globally. So as you might be aware that uh, Indian government has launched a national quantum mission. So there is a lot of funding flowing in. So especially in cryptography, there is a lot of scope. So quantum cryptography is one area where we want to encode and decode using the rules of quantum mechanics. So people are doing theory, experiment, simulation, everything. So if one is interested in theoretical aspect of quantum mechanics, or one is interested in doing some experiments, like optics kind of a setup. We have some photonic experiments or some simulation. So all the opportunities are there. And then in India, basically experimental opportunities are more in the field of quantum key distribution. In general, in quantum communication, uh, the theoretical and simulation opportunities are there. But if we talk globally, like we take into account Europe, Singapore, those countries as well. So then we have uh, like quantum teleportation and uh, this super dense coding, etc. Basically, we are trying to use uh, quantum systems, photons, to send information and to manipulate information. And there are tremendous opportunities if one is interested in uh, theoretical aspect of quantum mechanics or one is trying to do some experiment. Yeah, yeah. okay, sir. So uh, another question is why you have chosen this particular field? Okay, so in my case, what happened was that when I was a MSc student, I took a project in quantum information. Basically, it was in quantum foundation. So uh, quantum mechanics uh, tells us uh, many things which are not that intuitive about the world. For example, we have principle of superposition, etc. So I took a project in MSc and uh, I was interested in it. So then when I got an opportunity to do PhD, so I pursued that area and in PhD, we looked at uh, this uh, quantum foundation thing and later on I shifted towards quantum communication. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, if there is a student who is uh, for theoretical side, I'm saying that if there is a student who is interested in mathematical aspects like linear algebra thing, then he or she can very much go into this area. And if uh, he is uh, uh, studious and laborious, then he or she will get through this thing very easily. Yeah, so this answer actually uh, arises from another question that uh, what is the scope of research in theoretical physics? Yeah, so that is a very good question. and. Uh, Frankly speaking, there is not a unique answer. So 
the point is that in theoretical physics uh, what kind of uh, stuff you are trying to do if uh, one is trying to do a uh, stuff uh, which number one is of uh, uh, relevance to in the current situation and number two if there is some experiment where it can be used uh, immediately then it has a lot of importance even uh, you can write a project and you can get some funds if uh, there is that kind of a research which will be used in let us say 25 years down the line or 30 years down the line then uh, you can do that but uh, there may be a little bit of a problem in getting some funds mobilized for that kind of a research so in theoretical physics for example if we restrain ourselves to the field of quantum communication then in recent times there is a lot of scope because there is a lot of money flowing in from the government as well so if uh, one is only doing uh, theoretical aspects or some simulation kind of a thing then one is very much uh, likely to get some fellowship or some uh, project because uh, there is a lot of money uh, but uh, let us say some person is working in astrophysics or uh, some high energy physics so then you have to really make a case it is at least in india it is not that easy to get a, a separate fellowship for that so that is roughly the stage uh, i should say that uh, as compared to experiments uh, getting some fund in theory is a little bit tough as far as i have seen it may vary from person to person but as far as I, because in experiments for example your own work is of uh, immediate relevance so but our work is not of that uh, this one so we have to do a lot of cushioning to this work so uh, in quantum communication there is a lot of scope right now but uh, in some other areas one may have to go through a little bit of struggle and apart from the academic point of view like arranging funding and all so student might ask you why do we need funding for that so can you please elaborate that also yeah so funding is uh, so for example if one is trying to pursue phd in india so uh, one can get a fellowship like uh, jrf or srf from ugc or csir or there is a very reputed fellowship which you have got pmrf uh, but the point is that uh, after these fellowships are over and you have to survive in this area so it is not uh, like that that you will get a job immediately after your phd so you have to survive in the area for at least one or two years and this is the bare minimum you may have to survive for three years also so there comes the sort of role of the topic which you are working on that uh, if there is a lot of uh, Uh, if there are a lot of groups which are interested in a similar topic or which are interested in the skills that you have developed in your area then they will hire you and they will pay you but if uh, there is sort of uh, there is not a good alignment between the skills which you have developed during your phd and uh, the need of the market then one may face a problem so there the role of uh, funding and fellowships comes into picture and in europe uh, even the phd is project based so you have certain projects flowing in or you have certain mood and you have to work accordingly to get your funding secured in india it is like at the level of phd it is agnostic i am saying this for uh, csir and ugc in pmrf they look at the research proposal but in csir and ugc you based on your performance in the exam you get a fellowship but uh, after completing your phd and to survive in the area you have to modulate your interest and your approach in such a way that you can cater to the needs of the market very well explained actually so and another question i want to ask you what is the scope uh, for industry based jobs for theoretical physics yeah that is a very good question so 
the point is that uh, actually now when i realize after uh, spending roughly 6 years in phd so what i realize is that uh, even during phd we have to be conscious of the uh, skills that we are developing so uh, for example in industry you have to meet certain deadlines and you have to have certain goals which you have to fulfill so one very inevitable thing which i think almost everyone should learn is programming so at least one language everyone should know similarly if uh, you ask me about theoretical physics so in theoretical physics uh, for example Uh, there are many people who have uh, uh, completed their phd recently i know and they have uh, gone into the jobs of uh, data analysis or something like that so uh, if you are working in theoretical physics and at the end you don't want to do a post doc or you want to take up some industry related job then coding skills really play a role communication skills really play a role so one has to be able to explain oneself in uh, meaning suppose you have been given 5 minutes so one has to be able to explain what one wants to say so these two things uh, i think are really required in industry one is coding and the other one is communication skill i understand yes that's true and today most of the time the research becomes interdisciplinary also so coding yes. skill will you also helpful for analyzing your own data or simulate your yes. own theory yeah. so uh, another question i would like to ask you that uh, what are the suggestions uh, like uh, how an undergraduate student or postgraduate student who want to uh, like they are very much enthusiastic to pursue research in theoretical physics so how do they prepare for that so one thing is uh, that uh, if uh, one has access even in <coughs> undergraduate days one can uh, and that's where uh, the effort which you are doing comes into play because uh, suppose one is doing a post graduate study from some iit then many things one has access to but uh, at least uh, i can talk about myself where i have done my bsc from a small city so i did not have access to these things so uh, suppose one is interested in doing research so what one can do first thing is that uh, one should be able to uh, focus on the basics because those things will really play a sort of a foundation role so for example mechanics electrodynamics all those basic things thermodynamics statistical mechanics those things and a solid background in that uh, that has no other substitute and apart from that the point is that if one gets an opportunity to know then one can apply in summer uh, uh, this one internships so there are many summer internships available for undergraduate people who are uh, in their second year or third year in many iits and isas and tifrs so there even if one can work for two months let us say then one will get an experience of working in a lab and one can decide as to and one will get an exposure as to which kind of an atmosphere people are working in so that will really help uh, a beginner shape his or her ideas about research so one thing is to focus on what uh, we are studying in our curriculum like uh, mechanics and all those basic stuff a solid background has no other substitute and second thing is that uh, um, at that level one should because internet is accessible almost to everyone so at that level what are the internships which are available and if any how one can get there then that will really help us uh, in later part of our research let's say uh, any undergraduate student want to pursue an internship okay and he has no that much research background and uh, so how do you, uh, how do he or she should start uh, initiating those like he or she should mainly 
the professor or directly go to the portal and apply for the position? No, the point is that uh, yeah, it depends on the sort of uh, the background and uh, suppose one is a little bit interested. For example, uh, you have yourself shared some days back that uh, there is a, a TIFR has advertised, I think, some this one. So one can mail a professor if one has some idea or some this one. Or if one is okay with the, anything that one gets, then one can surely mail a person. But uh, the point is that those uh, internships which are advertised, because those are uh, the positions which are available. So there one can really apply and uh, the sooner the better. So uh, it is like uh, one should not be afraid. Uh, and one should not be hesitant if uh, almost everyone starts from zero. So initially one will get some first hand experience and then one will improve upon that. So first of all, we should apply in those things. If uh, there is some this one that uh, there are people who are close to IIT Delhi or at some other place. So one can go to, and yeah, one more thing that there are many conferences uh, which keep happening or some workshops which keep happening uh, some seven day school or workshop so there also one can apply so there are a lot of opportunities where one can try to start with yes definitely so most of the time uh, there are a lot of conferences or workshop or yeah. one day seminar so you can directly student can go and talk to the professor if there is any opportunity and also i remember uh, one another guest uh, he is doing abhishek ranjan he is doing uh, pursuing his research from akti university of norway and mm. he also gave a list of a uh, websites yeah. the students so the video is all, already available in the channel so i will share the link so uh, they can go to check which websites and where they can get some paid internship so yeah. there was uh, another yeah point so another question i want to ask you that uh, what are the as you have already talked about the future scopes and things so one get enrolled into phd mm -hmm. okay so first one is the how what are the things that they should keep in mind when choosing an institution for enrolling PhD. Okay, so this is uh, really an important question from the view because uh, the point is that uh, as you have also said in one of your uh, videos I have seen that uh, in PhD it is not that much uh, the role of institute is secondary. The role of the person with whom you are working or with whom you are going to work, that is primary. So while choosing a research institute or any institute, uh, one should uh, really invest oneself to find out uh, what kind of a person one is going to work with. So um, uh, you can have a look at his or her Google Scholar page, ResearchGate page, or any means through which you can get some information as to how the research is being conducted in the prospective lab in which you, you are trying to work. So uh, that is one thing. Secondly, what I have noticed is that all these things roughly give you the information which uh, is sort of there in the public domain and which is sort of uh, official or formal. So if you can try to get somehow a connection who can tell you this is this may not be easy in all the cases and in some of the cases it may even be infeasible. So that part one should anyways do that uh, uh, you can try to look at the research which is going on in the lab which you wish to join and based on that you take your decision. Secondly, if you can somehow get a connection and you can get some informal opinion about the place at which you are going to work, then that will be really, really helpful. Because uh, I have seen 
that this really plays a very important role in uh, striking the work life balance in your life so uh, one can uh, uh, research profile one can get on internet that is easy these days and secondly if one can get somehow a connection at least what one can do is to visit that place a uh, one day visit or two day visit and you can try to get a feel as to how the work is being done i am not saying that this will really pay off <laughs> but uh, in most of the cases at least it is better than nothing so you can try for example when uh, i was uh, trying to do or trying to find out uh, for my phd so then i have worked uh, with my supervisor for about a year so i was uh, uh, very much uh, aware of the mode of working i'm not saying that i understood him fully or anything like that but yeah mode of working is very much uh, known to me and that really helped me a lot in phd so uh, research profile that is one thing and secondly if one can somehow get a connection and one can somehow try to get uh, to know what the prospective supervisor as a person is so that will really play an important role yes that's a very important point and for phd it's very important because uh, the student need to yes uh, spend a lot of time yes correct completely that is one thing which i, I was thinking but i somehow missed so as uh, sathi has pointed out um, uh, we are we roughly spend of the order of 5 years it may be 5 plus epsilon 5 minus epsilon so 5 years is a lot of time so striking uh, work life balance is also i think important so uh, that is very important to know what kind of a person we are going to work with so another question that uh, my mind uh, in my mind is how should i behave in a lab where we get an opportunity to work yeah actually this question and the preceding question these are very very important questions so roughly the people all the people who uh, get an opportunity to get enrolled for phd they are knowledgeable at least in these institutions because they come through a very rigorous process so the point is that uh, when we get there it, our behavior in the initial days is really very important and instrumental in shaping the later part of phd and really if we can speak the entire research career because these are the foundation years so the point is that as soon as one gets an opportunity to get enrolled in phd from day one one should uh, spend as much time in the lab as possible it is not that in the first semester we do not have that kind of a deadline so we can afford to uh, not go in the lab meaning uh, we should try to go as early in the lab uh, right from day 1 or one month after and try to spend as much time in the lab as possible as sathi i want to have your opinion also on this because i have seen you when you were there in the very first semester of your phd i remember that uh, you used to spend quite a lot of time in the lab and uh, i think that really helped you what do you say yes initial days especially if you complete your work very soon then yes. you will have certainly advantage yeah. you don't have to think uh, after two or three years like yes. you will not think what will happen i yes. don't have paper or i don't have any work yeah so that could create a lot of pressure yeah so this is one thing that start as early as possible start going to the lab second thing which i sort of uh, meaning this may be my personal opinion but yeah that uh, you have to strike a working relationship with your lab mates because those are the people with whom you are going to work with whom you are bound to work if i may say so 
you can have your friends outside your lab but as long as you are in a particular lab you have to work with a particular set of people so you have to strike a working relationship with them so that you can uh, you know <clears throat> you can work with them and uh, you can somehow get your papers through or whatever uh, thing which is uh, expected from you so uh, number one is try to go as early in the lab as possible num and try to spend as much time in the lab as possible in the initial phase second thing is try to build a working relationship with your lab mates that is very important because those are the people with whom you are going to work and uh, third thing is that be ready for surprises because uh, i think in research what i can tell from my little experience is that uh, almost 80 to 90% things do not work for one reason or the other in uh, theoretical physics we face one set of problems you can tell us uh, another set of problems because you have worked in experimental area you have a lot of collaborations some machines may not work something like that and those things when in research there is only one level which is in your hand which is you except you you submit a manuscript to a journal or any other thing that is not in your hand so you have to uh, you know put up with those delays the only delay which you can avoid is the delay on your part and is the friction on your part so the point is that anyone who has got an admission should uh, start off as early as possible and uh, should uh, start with a zeal and enthusiasm and uh, try to strike uh, some working relationship with the lab mates so that you can get your job done and after that uh, i hope Uh, that the things will be okay and be ready for surprises the surprises will always be there no matter how good a strategy you form but if you start off early and if you have a calm and composed mind then you can deal with those surprises yes a very very good suggestion actually and very important topics uh, really thank you and appreciate your kind words and most important uh, uh, like uh, this kind of vision you have for the phd students this is uh, this is very true and draw experience from coming from your uh, for our like all of us know about phd so it's very important things that student should remember so the last question i would like to ask you that what should be your suggestions to all the students yeah actually that uh, i don't think i am qualified enough to give any suggestion but yeah uh, what uh, that is a thing and uh, you also give your opinion on that that uh, i think that we should start off as early as possible and we should have some meaning we should have some sense of responsibility that uh, if we try to get into a phd then we can get into a phd but after that uh, we should not uh, you know try to think that yeah we can spend 6 months uh, in some laser mood that uh, we should start off as early as possible and basically we should try to somehow make a deadline that yeah if the official deadline is of 5 years we will complete or we at least we will try to uh, lay the foundation of our work in the first 3 years only then i think uh, one will be able to look around and get some really good stuff done otherwise uh, if the things somehow overpower you then it becomes uh, meaning you have done your phd so please share your thoughts on this that uh, if uh, the initial phase is gone and if a lot of time is sort of gone then some stress comes etc so start off as early as possible chalk out a plan uh, for yourself because you know your strength you know your weaknesses 
so for a, a very small thing is that what is the optimal time in which you can work so that time one should find out and at that time one should really be free and uh, do one's work so these are some small things which i think uh, can boost up the pro boost up the productivity yes sir i also remember uh, in the very early days like first year second year i do have a, a sticky notes on my laptop and i write it all the bullet points i have to do this this is in this week or in this day and then once i have done i cut that and then i go to the next so i prioritize the work and complete the work cut it and next focus on the next work so and manage all the timelines and if i couldn't manage the timeline then i adjust something is delayed then i would like to adjust it so that everything should be with completed yes. within this week only so yes. there was always some pressure and even uh, i have like uh, heard some of the comments like why you are doing so much hard work this is only first year this is only second year and a lot of people will tell like that yeah uh, even uh, uh, some of the person also tell you that we don't come to lab first year because on the course work we have done but don't bother about those words yeah <laughs> Correct. Because ultimately, this is our own responsibility to write. Yes, our correct. This is the very important thing that if I may sort of rephrase this thing, we do not working for our supervisor or for anyone else. We are there to build our CV. So the kind of effort that we will put in that will get reflected in our CV. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your uh, suggestions and uh, kind words, and also very inspiring uh, suggestions to all the students. Uh, you have already talked uh, from the like taking internships, going to internships, and then how to join the lab. What is our behavior to the lab? How should we choose institute? And the scope in your research in uh, quantum information theory or theoretical physics to be uh, in a broader sense. So this all would. help the students of any uh, level he or she might be at the undergraduate post graduate or in phd so everyone i hope will get benefit from this video so thank you so much for giving us your guidance thank you sathi for having me here and thank you for your efforts in general which you are putting in in uh, this channel and uh, in keeping this thing going through despite your own commitments towards research and uh, yeah i am mindful of the fact that you have have a lot of commitments towards your lab and uh, towards finding some new positions but even in that time you are keeping this thing alive with so much uh, enthusiasm so that's really inspiring thank you thank you so much <laughs> so friends Uh, today we end the video, and in another video we will also share and uh, give us more knowledge from Suryan sir. And uh, this video, please like, share the video, and also share all the friends and uh, uh, give the understanding of PhD and uh, physics and theoretical physics. And uh, please share the video, subscribe to our channel, and it will motivate us a lot. So please subscribe, and thank you so much for watching this video.